Okay, folks, uh, today I want to talk to you about cutting dies. So here we have a set of cutting dies to make a, a relatively simple sport shoe. And uh, this is this is the shoe that we're that we're talking about today. Again, kind of classic sport shoe. And to to make this shoe, right, you need to be able to cut the pieces out. So here's what the paper pattern looks like. And what I was just showing you was all the metal parts of the cutting die. So let's let's just take a look. So let's start with this kind of obvious looking one, right? This is this is the strobel or the board last or or the uh, the f uh, or the footbed, right? You could all those same thing, or the insole board, whatever you want to call it. So here's the last bottom. You see how that fits there, right? And then here is a very typical cutting die. So what you're going to see, number one, is they they've made the they made the shape following the paper pattern, right? Pretty well spot on, okay. And then what you've got is the is the metal band that carries its thickness until you get to the edge, and there now you have the knife edge. And uh, so they've, they've bent it, they've welded it together, right? And once they bent it and then they fixed it, you know, and it doesn't look that clean, but there they just have the metal bars across to hold this thing into the exact shape. So once they, once they do those operations, they'll come back and they'll, they'll just tag it, you know, bump it with a hammer to make sure that it fits the piece of paper perfectly, right? And then they'll come back and they will powder coat it or spray paint it. Uh, if they need to come back and, and sharpen the edge, they will. Pe periodically, during the lifetime of a cutting die, they'll come back and sharpen it. Uh, and then, they'll, of course, you've got to mark it with the size, right? And if it's a high-volume shoe, um, you know, in the production setting, you might have, you'll ha of course, you'll have a left and a right. Uh, but you could, theoretically, if you just turn the material over, use the same cutting die, right, to make the left shoe, uh, to make the left side or the right side. But generally, you don't want to do that. Generally, you're going to uh, have one set of each because of the productivity, right? So you'll take this and you'll put it into a cutting press with a cutting mat, and that's how you'll cut. Okay, so that's the that's the bottom. Um, we'll just sort of go piece by piece. I'll take them off the wall and show you what these pieces are. So here's uh, here's the the collar lining cutting die, right? And that basically makes the inside collar of the shoe here, right? So that's what's that, that's what that die looks like. Here is the um, we have two two dies here, and these are the I stay overlay components that make this right. They're slightly different from left and right of the shoe. That's what that's what those are. Okay. Uh, here we have the heel counter and the heel counter cover. And, and this would be for this component here that makes the, the heel counter, the cover, this is the external piece. And this smaller piece is the, is the reinforcing component. So yeah, you, you need to have to, you know, you need to have a cutting die for each of those. Okay. Uh, next here, I'll show you the, the foam pattern. So this is for the, the collar foam, right? The piece that fits in here. Here's what that looks like. Here's the, here's the cutting die for that. That's collar foam cutting die. Um, here we are gonna have the, the tongue pattern pieces, right? So the tongue foam and the tongue face are, are two different sizes. The face is slightly oversized, and this you could use this actually uh, for the the lining pattern also, right? So it could be the it'll be the face of the tongue, and it could also be the lining, depending on how you close the tongue, whether it's a binding or a stitch and turn, you might have more or less stitch allowance. And then here's the foam pattern, right? So for whatever you're gonna stuff stuff the shoe with, right? So there you go. There's your your two dies for the, for the tongue again. Yeah, right. So there's no left and right on this, so no big deal. Uh, here is the mustache or the or the backstay pattern, right? There it is. Looks like that. This is a little bit of a goofy looking little cutting die for that. Again, again, this is a symmetrical part, so you, theoretically you'd only need one of those. All right. Um, here is the toe cap pattern part, and here's what the cutting die looks like for that. Now, this piece. Because this is asymmetrical, you definitely are going to need, uh, you're definitely going to need a set of those, right? That are left and right, because that's how it's going to work. Now, um, again, 
the uh, the paper pattern shows the overlap mark. The cutting die actually doesn't. Okay. Uh, next here we have the. I just showed you the toe cap pattern. This is the toe cap reinforcing material, right? So this is undersized that fits inside the toe cap to make it stiffer. And then here's the, the smaller cutting die. Oops, let's make sure we get that right side up there uh, because it's asymmetrical. So that's what that cutting die looks like. Um, okay, we covered that. Uh, here, this little piece is the eye stay reinforcing. Fits in here. And this is the, the cutting die for that. There you go, eye stay reinforcing. Just, just like that. Um, you know, these kind of weird globular shapes this actually is the is the eye stay of the shoe so you can see how those fit together right there right and when you when you put it together it looks like they're touching but remember this is 2d and when you wrap it in 3d it 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 makes space for the tongue so that's what those are and the cutting die for these now there's some interesting feature on this so this is the first dies that we've looked at that have the punching holes in it right so here you can see We've got eyelet, eye stay holes. Um, even actually the, the reinforcing die actually does not have the holes in it, right? But the, uh, the, uh, the, the overlay die for the quarter does have those. And actually you can also see this is the, this is the slot for the, for the quarter logo to punch through. So there's a little rubber logo or a woven label. So that actually, let's try to zoom in there so you can see. So these are the, the punch posts, right? And that is the opening for the for the um, for the logo to come through, and they're just careful. And those are just welded on to the back. So when you go to cut this thing, it makes all of those features right. Because this way you can locate the hardware, you can, and you still have to come back once you assemble the shoe, and do a punching operation. But at least this lets you know exactly where you're going to punch. Okay, so that's what that's what the quarter logos. Uh, sorry, that's what the quarter components look like with the with the with the punch holes in them all right and uh last but not least we have the the lining pattern now um this is divided and they've divided it this way so that you can that you can use smaller pieces it cuts more efficiently right and also you see that if you try to make it one piece it would overlap because the way the pattern is sprung but this way i mean they just actually once the pieces are cut you just sew them together and this actually you know, it makes the cutting dies smaller and makes the pattern more efficient, right? So here we have the the uh, the vamp lining cutting die that goes with, that goes with that piece, okay? And then we have the matching quarter pieces here and here, okay? Now the last thing we have here, this actually, you're like, what is this little thing? Well, <laughs> this this little thing is a is a matched pair to cut this piece, right? So again, for every piece that has to be cut by machine, you're gonna need a cutting die, right? And again, like I said, if you're if you're doing a, a high production volume shoe, then you're gonna have multiple cutting dies. Uh, but you can see, you know, it's a lot of metal that goes into this. Um, the the workers that, that make this are pretty highly skilled, but the, the actual, the material that goes into this is not very expensive. So. Believe it or not, you can get a whole size run of cutting dies for several hundred dollars. It's not several thousand dollars, several hundreds of US dollars to, to even, you know, to, literally to make a 15 set cutting die. Again, um, there's some videos uh, on the website where you can see the workers using the the, the table, the, 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 the kick table, uh, to make these, but again, this is what a, this is what a set of cutting dies look like for a very, for a very typical shoe. Again, you know, this doesn't look like a complicated shoe, but there are a lot of parts and you're going to have to cut it, have, have to have a cutting die for every single one of them. I mean, that's a, that's what a cutting die looks like.